Welcome back to the second part of remote sensing for wind energy. Here we will look more on applications and measuring more than one wind component. We can look back on the previous uh, lecture where we talked about how we can uh, measure wind remotely by devices such as radars, lidars and sodas. And we also learned about the basic principles of remote sensing of one wind component and did some very basic calculations. And you also learned the difference between pulsed and continuous wave devices. In this lecture, we will uh, be able to describe the basic principles of remote sensing of several wind components and also describe some use cases for remote sensing in wind energy. You remember this picture from the last presentation where we talked about that a remote sensing device like a, a LiDAR only measures the component of the wind, the wind here, the component along uh, the, the beam of light that it emits. So it's just the projected one. And uh, that means that the wind could also have been like this. We have no idea about the, the component of the wind that is perpendicular to the line of sight. In order to tell something about that, what do we need? You can think for a few seconds. What we need is several LiDARs. In this case, we have two LiDARs and they are trying to measure this, this, this wind vector here. So the number one is yellow now. It measured the projection of this onto its line of sight. And the same goes for the other LiDAR. It measures uh, the wind along uh, that line of sight. And then, then you have sort of fixed the location of, of this wind vector. You know it, but it's just a, a problem of uh, a reconstruction of the wind based on these two measurements. You have these two measurements and you uh, aim for getting the two components of the wind in two orthogonal directions. So it's about inverting uh, a projection matrix. We will not go into the details here today but we will show some examples of how you can use a LiDAR. In the previous lecture we talked about that you could measure in quite small volumes with the continuous wave LiDAR if you focus at a close uh, distance. And you can even uh, resolve small uh, flow features in a wind tunnel and we have an example of that in this image here. Here we have actually a wind farm with uh, three, three small wind turbines and what we are seeing here and is is a, vert a horizontal plane of the three turbines and we can see the wakes of them. So this was in a, in a study where we tried to, to see how we, by controlling the orientation of the, the yaw direction of the turbines, could optimize uh, the flow uh, such that you could improve the harvesting of power and reduce the, the loads in, in this wind farm. And we could do that with the uh, LiDAR, we have it over here. We call it a wind scanner that can direct the, the line of sight beam into different directions. And we have a second one outside of, of the image here. So that means if we are then keeping them in a horizontal plane, the beams, we can reduce the problem to a 2D problem and, and we can get these kind of measurements uh, by using two line of sights. We go to the next slide. And here is an example from a very huge scale. We started with a very small scale flow, but when you go to larger scales, then uh, the volume, as you remember, of a continuous wave system explodes. It goes quadratically increasing with the distance how, over how long uh, volume you are um, averaging the results. But the pulse system has constant uh, sampling volume all over, so you can use it at several kilometers. Here you have a range actually ranging from minus 2,000 meters to 3,000 meters. So it's a distance of five kilometers over a valley in, uh, in Portugal and with an instrument, a pulsed LiDAR system, that then can measure the flow uh, in the valley between these ridges. And this can, of course, be used to, to get a better understanding for, for the flow in a complex terrain and uh, help with the modeling of wind for for uh, assessing the, the wind resources in different places. But we just mentioned the 2D case. Of course, the obvious uh, 
continuation of this is to go to, to three dimensions. And then you, in principle, need three LIDARs crossing in the same point. And an example of that we have here, we have used the same uh, instruments that we have used in, inside a wind tunnel. We have used them here uh, to measure the wake behind uh, a turbine. We have a turbine here at the DTU RESA site outside our offices. We have placed this kind of LiDAR instrument in three positions. You have one, um, you have one over here and you have one somewhere down here and one uh, in another location. So they come from three different directions. The beams are crossing in a point that we can move around in a plane in this case. You can see some dimension here. So this is in the wake area scanning, maybe plus minus 60 meters to the side and then going up into to the height. And what we see here, the colors here, represent the wind along the, 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 the wind component along the mean wind direction. So, so coming through the rotor out here. And then we have uh, indicated the, the perpendicular wind components uh, with the, these arrows here. So you can see how the, the wake is swirling around behind the turbine. And uh, you can also notice that it looks a little little strange down here. Maybe, maybe you should not really trust those measurements. Maybe you can uh, think for a few uh, seconds about what goes wrong down here. We talked about the 2D case and the 3D case here. Uh, if you have three line of sights and they come closer and closer down to, to a, a common plane, they are, then, then they are measuring in one plane and then they cannot tell so much about or nothing about the component perpendicular to that plane. So, so that, that happens when you're coming too close to the ground, you will have problems to measure the vertical component. And that's typically true for, um, for, for this long range measurements with pulse system that we talked about before. Because th then you are measuring uh, maybe several kilometers away and if you're trying to measure something very close to the ground, they are basically in, in one uh, uh, horizontal uh, plane. And uh, another application area of uh, LIDARs for remote sensing is to place them on top of a turbine so they can help help uh, to give control signals for the turbine. It can be very useful for the turbine to know a little bit in advance uh, something about the winds that will come so they can uh, pitch out their, their blades and uh, get a little uh, lower uh, load and uh, prolong their lifetimes. So here is uh, an example where we have used some different LIDARs. Uh, this top one, we call it the spinner LIDAR. It's actually developed to be inside a spinner, but it can measure over a whole, uh, whole rotor area here. So you can see wakes coming in. And then there are some, some more uh, commercial, uh, this is a research instrument. And then there are some uh, commercial systems here with just two beams or, or, or four beams that can be used to, to direct uh, the wind turbine into the, the correct wind direction and uh, also help uh, alleviating some fatigue loads by uh, knowing what will come in a short while. It's almost like uh, if you're wo out walking in the daylight, you can walk quite fast, but if it's dark and you don't see anything, you have to take step by step and, and you are not uh, sure what will happen a uh, few meters in front of you because you don't see it. And that, that, that is uh, the advantage that the LiDAR brings to, to the control system, that you actually can be aware of what will come in a few seconds. We have talked now about this uh, different ways of measuring several components of the wind. But this is not the most used uh, use case out in the wind industry. Most often, remote sensing, when you talk about that, it's uh, from, from one instrument, not from three instruments, but just from one instrument. But, but how can it then measure all the three wind components from one point? Yeah, well, that's possible if you do some assumptions. So in, in, for instance, in a very flat terrain, you could uh, imagine that the wind is more or less the same at lots of different points. So if you have one LiDAR instrument that 
swings the beam around, maybe around a circle or in some, some different directions, then it will effectively actually have different line of sights hitting the same wind. If you assume it's the same wind, then you can decompose that into to the, the, the different wind components. But of course this assumption breaks down in a more um, complex flow uh, in the wake of a turbine or uh, close to a forest or something like that. So, but it's still possible to, to, to use it to get some idea about uh, the winds. Yes, we have come to the, to the end of this lecture and we uh, do a small summary. In this lecture you, lecture, you have learned to describe the principles of remote sensing of more than one wind component. And you have seen some different use cases that you now can describe and uh, get uh, some uh, understanding from what you can actually do with a, a remote sensing device in uh, wind energy. And for the last point here, what should you do if you would like to know more about remote sensing for wind energy? That's a question for you. And I have one answer here. And that is actually to sign up for a GLE DTU summer school in remote sensing for wind energy. Uh, you can see the link down here. And uh, you're very welcome and uh, learn more about remote sensing for wind energy. So thanks for today and uh, see you later.